Hi friends, hope you are all doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the habits which make for highly effective postdocs. And I'm going to list seven of these habits. So let's look at some of these aspects. So essentially the first habit would be that you should keep office timings and what this means is that when you are a PhD student or certainly when you are a bachelor's and master's degree student, you are typically used to going and coming as and when you please from the department, from the lab, from the university, and you essentially maintain random timings. Now, in some cases, PhD supervisors do expect presence in the lab, but in many cases, these timings are also quite random. But I would say the best thing to do if you get a postdoc is to treat it like a, a regular job. This is very important for self-discipline as well as for efficient performance and growth in career. So essentially try to establish a schedule such as 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or maybe 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. or something like that. Now a good strategy is to essentially come in sometime before your supervisor comes and leaves some time after your supervisor does so that he or she feels that you are there in the lab all the time. Now, essentially, why is this important? One of the things is that it encourages professionalism, but also so that the work does not fill up all the available time. Now, when you are a bachelor or master's degree student, it is okay to spend time randomly at the university and in your room or in your apartment. So what some people do is they work late at night, then they are sleeping late and so on. But if you are going to become a more mature person, you may think of having a family sometime down the road or you may already have a family then you are going to find that you need to make a clear demarcation between your work life and your personal life. And one of the things which this schedule of 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. will do for you is that it will tell you that, okay, this is the time when you are going to your workplace and the remaining time you are at home. Now, it may be that you take some work home, maybe you read a paper, maybe during the weekend you go through some papers or thesis and something like that but that is okay that is not really the office type of work where you often sit in the computer room or you are sitting in front of a PC or you are working on your laptop in the lab or you are doing experiments as the case may be. So that was rule number one and let's then come to rule number two and the rule number two is that meet your supervisor at least once a week. Now, I will tell you this is something which is very important because some of the students, they go to postdocs and they just think, well, I'm just working on my problem and so I'm now a PhD, I know how to do research and so on, so I'll just continue to work on my problem and as and when I have the final results, I will meet my supervisor. So, essentially the supervisor also in many cases may want to see the final product of your research, which is a paper. But actually what happens is that human beings being human beings, they do like to be kept informed about how the progress on your project is going and for your career and for your future in general, it's always a good idea to set up a meeting every week with your supervisor and essentially you can meet him or her during this time. So maybe set up a 45 minute meeting go to his room or maybe he visits the lab during that time you can meet this person and you can appraise them about what is the progress you have made in your research are there any interesting discoveries you have made maybe have a graph or two to show him maybe have a table to show him or something like that also it's very important to let him know if you are not making good progress in your work maybe you need something and this is where the feedback from the supervisor can be really helpful to you. Sometime when you are stuck on some problem, they may tell you something very simple like, why don't you print out the matrices and take a look at the off-diagonal columns 
and if you do this you may find that there is some issue there because many a time people who have a lot of experience in the field know what are the problems which people are going to face when they are doing something so they can suggest you some simple tests or some simple new results which you can obtain which can shed a lot of light into the problem and whenever you show somebody who is skilled in a topic some new graph or table they are always going to tell you what to do next maybe you can do a statistical study maybe you need to also plot the standard deviation or the error chart so all this kind of interaction is very important and in fact most of the learning in research takes place through these 15 minute or 30 minute or 45 minute interactions which you have with your supervisor now i would say though one meeting a week is necessary i would say try to schedule in a second random meeting sometime during the week also if you can if your supervisor is not too busy and this is especially important if you are encountering some problem related to your research so maybe you need some question about some equipment you need to buy maybe you have some question about a paper you have read and so on now of course don't do this more than twice a week because then the advisor may feel that you are a high maintenance postdoc and that's not something you want to become because again they are very busy people and so on but every now and then if you want to get the person involved in your project that's always good because generally human beings like to know that they are involved in the project and then they also feel comfortable that their name is there in the paper when you finally produce your draft paper and give it to him or her now the third point is that you should have a plan for your postdoc year and very often people who are doing their phd they don't have any plan and it's hard to make a plan during your phd because like i've mentioned sometimes before even your supervisor doesn't have a really good plan about your phd sometime you do the phd and you kind of figure out your research problem as time passes now what happens with the postdoc is that you need to be very clear as to what are the goals you are going to accomplish throughout the year now if you ever work in a company they clearly have things known as okrs or essentially things which you are going to create or accomplish through the years and this is very important because management often uses this to track your progress and if you essentially meet your goals through the year then you are supposed to have done very well if you exceed your goals then of course you get a promotion or a raise as the case may be now having a set of tasks laid out for the year is going to help you and this is going to suddenly help your supervisor also now one strategy or tactic i will tell you is to put in a conference paper in the year and this helps you because it is generally easier to write a conference paper if you have planned it you submit the abstract the abstract is likely to get accepted in most cases and then what you do is that you write your paper now generally what i would say is while journal papers are very good to have conference papers get written and in short notice so that's something which is very important because what may happen with a journal paper is that you may write a draft your advisor may see it he may think of new results and this process may go on and on and on this may take two years or so and you don't really have anything to show during the process however if you have written a conference paper and you have shown it to your supervisor he has come back to you after the point when it is reasonably good and the deadline for the conference paper is coming you may just decide to submit it so most of the time a conference paper is expected to be a decent document but not the optimal document like a journal paper so like i mentioned before conference papers get written journal papers get planned and they keep going through the review process with the supervisor before they ever see the light of the day of getting reviewed by the journal itself now remember that your postdoc may come up for renewal at the end of the year and at that point you need to show some accomplishment that's another place where the conference paper comes in very useful so that's 
rule number three or habit number three now number four is have good relations with your lab mates and this is very important because a lot of research is actually a socio-dynamic construct and therefore the more interaction you have with your fellow colleagues in the lab the easier it's going to be for you to get some work done so essentially whether it is software whether it is equipment whether it is word processing software such as latex or even information from the grapevine about where the jobs are who are going where who are the people in the field who like your advisor who do not like your advisor or your group all these are very important pieces of information and sometimes if you do not know any one of these things you may actually be in trouble down the road so unfortunately there have been cases of people who have done a lot of good work but they submitted their paper to a journal which doesn't gel very well with their supervisor and in fact the case may be that the supervisor may not be directly telling you not to submit your paper there so again there are various unwritten rules in academia many things are considered inappropriate and appropriate so a lot of this information you can find from your fellow students in the lab now another fringe benefit of course is going to be the social network you develop in the lab as the students go get jobs elsewhere they can not only help you get jobs they can also become sources for your references down the road so do remember that this network will be there with you for your entire life and you can always use them as referees for your paper down the road after some time has gone by or for referees for thesis of your students or things like that so one of the reasons why postdoc becomes useful to many people is that they create a network outside their phd university and this network may be a global network if you have taken the trouble of going abroad for a postdoc which i recommend 100 percent to people wherever they are if you are in france go to germany if you are in germany go to us and so on now the fifth point is that sit in courses if needed so just because you have finished your regular study in the bachelor's master's and phd degree doesn't mean that you have to stop taking courses but you need not take courses for credit so in fact if some course is being offered somewhere which is very relevant to your research work you can just ask the professor and sit in the class and almost all professors will permit you to do that now for example if you are somebody working in material science and you want to use machine learning to discover new materials then you can go and sit in a machine learning class and actually you can get 90 percent of the knowledge of the class by just sitting in and most of the time what happens in research is that you use one algorithm so you may decide to for example use deep learning and in that case you need to only sit in that part of the class where this professor is discussing deep learning so this is very efficient in terms of research it's not possible really to know all the things which are happening nowadays and in fact when you do phd many things may not be taught at that point which are being used later in life so suddenly this habit of randomly sitting in parts of the classes are very important now the next point is that go to different thesis defense and seminars which are taking place at the university or institute and this is very important because now you have gone to a new university or a new department and there will be phd thesis defense even master's thesis defense there are going to be renowned visitors who come to the university and to the department and in many universities they have something known as a weekly seminar that's given every thursday different students are asked to present sometime universities have a monthly lecture and so on so all these are very useful and in fact this is where a lot of the learning takes place when you go to a good university so again a university is not something where you just take courses or where you read papers which have downloaded one of the important things to go to seminars and maybe you can ask some questions maybe you can know some more people to increase your 
weak network as the case may be. Now the next habit or the seventh habit is to take care of yourself, your finances, your health and so on. Now this is very important because sometimes what happens to postdocs and researchers in general is they spend so much time in thinking about research and their career and their future that they forget to take care about their own aspect. So again this is very important. Maybe your stipend is not too high so you need to think about your finances, you need to set up a bank account, you need to get some secured credit cards to improve your credit history and so on because remember that you may spend three years as a postdoc and if you have done nothing on this account then what may happen is that at the end of this time you get a job and you have no credit history so it will greatly delay your situation about trying to buy a car or something like that so now i know of some people who did a postdoc for three years in us and then they got a job and their boss of course wanted them to commute to work and so on and these guys did not even take the trouble of learning how to drive or they did not have any credit history because they did not get any secured credit cards and improve their status to a normal credit card and so on. So take care of all these things because these different bodies are de disparate. So just because you have six journal papers in your resume or CV does not mean that the bank is going to give you a credit card. So you need to take care of that. The other issue of health is also very important. So generally you can walk around substantially in the campus. You can take care of the food you eat because many a time in the campus they give a lot of fast food because the UG students love to eat fast food and so on. But if you are a postdoc, you are not so young anymore. So you need to concentrate on eating healthy food, eat more fruits and vegetables and lower fat products. And so this will keep your health okay. You can of course use the facilities of the university most of the time. So if you are a postdoc in the university, you should be able to use the university gym, the facilities where sports are played, for example, badminton or tennis or racquetball. Or if you are a team player, you may even join the soccer team or the cricket team as the case may be. So all these are very important for your mental health also. You should never put all your eggs in the paper basket because again papers are difficult to get at certain times reviews are always negative and so the entire academic environment is somewhat based on negative feedback so one place where you get positive feedback is if you take part in any activity related to physical fitness so whether you are walking whether you are going to gym that is certainly something which you can think about doing. So this was my take on seven habits of highly effective postdocs. Many of them are also going to benefit PhD students or any faculty members or people in general who are working in various types of technology companies. And I hope this video is useful to you. And I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.